The first game in the best of five series in the semi-finals of the winner bracket for Battle for Christmas tournament, BFME to the race of the Witch King between Red Reaper from Lebanon against Ave Havi from Turkey is all about to begin. The first game is going to be played on the map Erin Lea Edit in the matchup is Isengard against Goblins. Let's get it started. Yeah, I think that's gonna be the plan. We're gonna make the other tournament, each team, 16 players, like a small one, but you know, I think that's gonna be fine as well. Alright, guys, at the top side of the map, we have the yellow goblin player Ave Havi against the red Isengard player Dread Reaper at the bottom side. I think it's kinda greedy pick from Ave Havi to pick goblins on a map like Erin Lair Edit. Uh, I would understand that if we would be on a map like Westworld or, you know, on a map like Jungles of Far Harad. But Erin Lea, I don't think it's a great map for the Goblin faction, but maybe Ave Havi can prove me wrong. We have two tunnels into the Spider Pit, but, you know, Dread Reaper was just using the vision of Palantir, so he sees the Spider Pit's coming boys. And that's kinda interesting to go for the vision of Palantir, in my opinion, why? Because first of all, he knew that he's facing against goblins, and the second thing is, I feel like buffs in the Rise of the Witch King are very impactful, especially early on. And with the vision of Palantir, you're gonna miss a buff in your first one, two, three fights, and that's gonna favor the uh, the goblin player Ave Have because he has the war chant available for the next fight. Such a waste! You could stream snipe. <laughs> yeah, he could just stream snipe. Why would you waste vision of Palantir? Doesn't make any sense to me. Alright, so two furnaces, clan stating into the third furnace. Uruk Pit is coming up at the same time. Clan stating is something we see much more often lately against the Goblin faction. I think the reason is simple. Clan stating got buffed in the current patch 2.02 version 8.4. So it does not it does now cost less resources to build that up. And on the other side, the Wildman of Dunland, they are really cost efficient units. They cost only 150 each. And they will still be able to win the 1v1 fights against the Goblin Warriors. So the spider uh, link start, I like this start quite a lot. They are quite mobile units, just like the Alvin units, they are also being able to get stealthed around the trees. And I think what you wanna do is, I think I like this a lot. Like go for the creep, get them level 2, that's gonna be a huge power spike for the goblin faction because they will have the self regeneration. And you, you will also get money, you know, power points, everything from a creep. And there is no reason of attacking early on. And when it comes to attack with those Spiderlings, what I want to see from Ave Havi is that he's grouping up with two Spiderling battalions at once and attacking actually always two by two. This way you can make sure to, you know, burst down those furnaces from the Isengard's player fast enough. Okay, we have Wildman, we have Crossbomb, uh, Pikeman on the field, more Wildman are coming from the clan setting. Uh, he's gonna go for the creep as well. At the left side of the map, we have four work layers in total on this map, by the way, guys. Two of them at the top side. And Ave Havi is creeping his own work layer first. And two of them at the, you know, I mean, kinda, you know, one of them is at the top side, one of them is at the bottom side, and two of them are in the middle. Okay, uh, Spiderlings are here, they need to be careful against the pikemen, you can't fight them. And Spiderlings are not the best units to fight against any other unit, beside orcs and goblins, they can't win against them. And I think they are the best units when it comes to for harassment. You want to use them to actually constantly put pressure on the buildings from your opponent. Okay. I think this is gonna hurt, especially the Wildman of Dunland. He's also purchasing the torches, guys. But keep in mind, Isengard has no buff. He was going for the vision of Palantir. And Ave Havi is gonna use his buff defensively. Yeah, the units with the torches, they are hitting like an absolute track. But remember, the torches, they are only increasing the damage output from those units. They are still squishy and they are dying quite fast. On the other side, he's gonna use the spiderlings as mentioned before for offensive purposes and that's so nice. But going for the clan setting might not be the best case or, you know, best choice from Ave Havi. I think he should be trying to take down the furnace first. Because the barracks from Isengard, uh, you know, both the Uruk pit but also clan setting are quite tanky. They have 3000 HP, so he will need a lot of time to burst it down. And he might even lose quite a lot of units and might not even be able to do that. Let's see. He's committing fully. The pikemen are not able to attack because he, they are getting body block from his own Wildman of Dunland. You know, he's gonna commit now. He will be 
able potentially to get away with two battalions. Yeah, he was able to save both of them, which is huge. And again, like mentioned before, they have to have regeneration. He might lose them, by the way, to this creep here, unfortunately. Oh, he lost one of these, unfortunately. Oh, that hurts. It was kind of risky. Tunnel here has been taken down. We have also Goblin Arches on the field. Threat Reaper is gonna say GG and the game number one is over. Just like that, ladies and gentlemen. Just like that. And Ave Have is the winner of the game. We're gonna save the replay. Ave Have versus Threat Reaper. Uh, game one. And we're gonna jump right into the game number two. The game number two is all about to begin. It's gonna be the same matchup Isengard against Goblins. It is on the map Westfold this time. Let's get it started. <laughs> All right, it was a it was kind of a questionable game number one. The vision of Palantir made the first attack from Isengard kind of useless, and I'm always saying that, but I will keep saying that you know as long as I see something like this, buffs you don't want to miss them in Rise of the Witch King because they are so impactful. But yeah, let's see if the Isengard player is gonna go for the vision of Palantir again. Yeah. It's like, Dread Reaper is like, you know what, Ave Ave, I'm gonna show you I can make it work even with the Vision of Palantir. I don't need Warchan against you. And he's picking Vision of Palantir once again. He's, a, he's the Isengard's player at the top side of the map. And on the other side, we have the Yellow Goblin player Ave Ave, who was able to win the first game on the map Erin Lear Edit in the same matchup. Two tunnels into the Spider Pit. You know what they are saying, never change a running system. You know, it worked pretty nicely on a map like Erin Lear Edits, and let me tell you that much, this matchup should be even harder for Isengard on a map like Westfold, because this map is just much, much bigger than the other one. Skippy, thank you so much for the primers. Four months. Welcome back. Appreciate that. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Two tunnels, Spider Pit is coming up for Goblins. He's gonna build the third tunnel also defensively at the bottom right side. On the other side, I see two furnaces, clan sitting into the third furnace. Actually not, he was going for 3 furnaces before the clan sitting. So he will have more like an economical start. Um, you know, I think this matchup can go still either way. I wouldn't say goblins are great against Isengard. But I can tell you that much. In my personal opinion, Isengard needs time to become strong. Yes, Isengard has really strong units. Like Urukai are pretty strong. Like Pikemen, you know, Crossbowmen, they are all strong units. Charco, very strong hero. Lourdes, very strong hero. One of the best heroes in the game, actually. But Isengard's units, they are also very expensive at the same time. So in order to reach the mid to late game power spike with Isengard, you will need something like Devastation from your spellbook. You will need something like Fuel the Fires. And once you reach that point, you should never ever run out of resources. And we have seen a couple of times what Saruman can do in the late game as well. So I'm curious what's gonna happen. We have two tunnels, Spider Pit, the Spiderlings are on their way. They are creeping the first work lane already at the bottom right side. There's a tunnel at the bottom right side and he's going now for the Goblin Cave. So pretty much the same stars like in the game before. We have also the same start from the Isengard's player. So he was going for the clan stating and then he's building up the Uruk Pit. Batman of Dunland, um, units that can be very effective especially if the goblin player is not paying attention because of the pillage ability and especially with the torches they will deal much more damage to the enemy structures uh, but the problem is again like in the game before he has no buff available he was going for the vision of Palantir, and that's gonna make his you know attacks early on like in the first five minutes actually not as impactful as if he would go for the war chant He's going for more Whitemen of Dunland, Crossbowmen. He has no Pikemen around though to keep them alive. Pikemen are not only great against uh, you know horses, but they are also nice for body blocking and tanking the enemy units. You can always place them in between your units, in front of your units. In the porcupine formation, they are still quite tanky. And look at this devastation here, guys. Imagine he has buff available. This fight would be so much more one-sided for the Isengard's play. He's gonna lose a lot. In the spider links, they can always disengage. They killed almost a full battalion of crossbowmen, and that is already worth it. Because this crossbowmen, they cost 350 each, and the spider links on the other side from the spider pits level 1, they cost only 300 each. So he kills a lot, and he will keep killing a lot. And the goal is to keep Isengard away from the tunnels, and he manages to, that, to do that pretty nicely. The only good thing for the Isengard player Dreadreaper in this situation is that 
the goblin player Ave Habe was using his buff kinda defensively. So he wants to have it available for the fight, for the attack. And Spiderlings, by the way, are very, you know, weak against archers and the crossbowmen are a great counter unit to these units. Spiderbit is only level 1, so he will need some spider riders later on, but that, first of all, means he needs to upgrade the spider pits to level 2, which costs you money and time. Isengard's player has only one power point collected, so he is far away from getting the Warchant unlocked. And we have three power points collected by Ave Have. And I think once he has five power points collected, uh, both the options, Tainted Land but also Cave Bats, can be really uh, great in some certain situations. Like Tainted Land can be nice, which can be used offensively. So we have like a like a place in which you will have always the buff until the next Tainted Land. And the second option is the Cave Bats. This way you can make your units stronger with the Warchant and debuff the enemy units and make them even weaker. Especially in those kind of situations in which Isengard does not even have a buff. So the double, you know, the double buff on your units, I mean, you know, debuffing the enemy units is kind of making your units stronger as well, because this way your units are going to deal more damage to these units they are, which are getting debuffed. And they are also dealing less damage to you, so it's a double buff kind of thing. Okay, so Goblin player is just destroying Isengard's army, and remember what I was saying in the beginning of the game, Isengard? Yes, has strong units, but also very expensive units. Like man, they cost 400 each, guys, and losing them is gonna hurt you big time. On the other side, goblins are very cost efficient units, they cost only 100 each. And he has also now a fissure up on the fields for the half troll swordsmen. Half troll swordsmen are just like Urukai, the most expensive swordsmen in the game. But I personally like them more than the Urukai because they are so much more useful in many different situations like against horses for example they can't get trampled down they have a charge attack which can replace the war chant that's why i do prefer the half troll swordsman over the urukai the furnace has been taken down that reaper is not being able to deal any kind of economical damage yet yet to the goblin player ave have he's creeping the troll in the middle he's building up multiple furnaces just to be able to increase his command points He's very down on command points, uh, on power points as well. 500 command points collected. Might be able to save that with the crossbar man. Let's see. It's gonna be close. I think the goblin player might still be able to take it down. On the other side, we have 8 power points collected for Ave Have. He's not going for the Keith Bats. He's also not going for the Tainted Land. I think he's gonna try to save for the Spider Alliance Summon. Which can be nice most of the time. Like, you can deal so much economical damage with the Spider Allies if used nice, you know, if you don't mess up with them and, you know, summon them in, a, in the worst possible situation, you can at least end up taking like 2, 3, 4 furnaces with the Spider Allies. They are dealing quite a lot of damage to the enemy structures. Okay. Look at this. There are some tunnels around this side, two of them from Ave Have. So the Goblin player, as expected, is expanding very nicely. And uh, does he have Warchant available for this units? Yes, he does. Oh, that's gonna hit like an absolute track, guys. Those half troll swordsmen, they're gonna be demolishing everything. If they are using the aggressive stance and the Warchant buff, they're gonna deal so much damage. And I like the way Ave Have is playing that game a lot. He's splitting his spiderlings from the main army, trying to pressure from multiple sides, and this way you can actually snowball, snowball your lead much harder. Like, there is no reason of... Ave Have taking a bad fight. He doesn't have to do that. He has much more units on the field than the Isengard's player. Talking about Isengard's player, he's going for the attack. Okay. Spider Allies is ready now from Ave Have, which can be used either defensively or offensively. I wouldn't use them defensively. He's gonna lose a couple of structures, but I think he should be good. The Goblin player was using his buff kind of defensively as well, so it's nice for Dread Reaper, this situation, but now he has to deal with the spiders being summoned. At the same time, the little spiderlings are destroying almost every single furnace, left and right. Uh, however, I think that's not bad, because look at the Wildman of Zanland, they are stealing money constantly from Ave Have whenever they are able to attack the enemy structures. But on the other side, he has nothing to defend this side of the map. He's losing literally every single furnace. And Ave Have is saying, oh, come on, I think, in the chat, I don't know if he, maybe he's not happy with the current situation. He has still 600 command points collected, he has tunnels left and right all around the map. But Isengard's player is still in the game and he's only 3 power points away from getting his 
Oh, his spider allies summon. I think they were dying quite fast to this tower and the fur. Uh, he what? He was not even able to destroy this furnace, really? That's really unfortunate. Isengard has still some units around this area, but now they will lose the fight because there are half of swordsmen, spiderlings. In those kind of situations, I think you don't have to disengage, just fight. The reason why he's disengaging is because he has some backup coming, right? More pikemen and crossbowmen are coming. And if he can actually position himself nice and micros around, he can maybe win this fight. Because he has a lot of frontline units. Pikemen are very tanky in the porcupine formation. This tunnel is still remaining on the field. And these tunnels are remaining on the field as well. So, And Isengard player has zero vision control around this side. What you can do with Isengard is you can go for the Kribian upgrade on the fortress. And that's gonna give you much more vision control. Which I think is a great choice against the Goblin Faction. He is one and a half power points away from the, from the potential devastation. Devastation can be nice against the spider ride. I mean, devastation can be used into Sharku. Sharku can be nice against the spider riders. Can be nice against the goblin spam. Lourdes is always a solid choice as well. Um, but you know, the thing is, Isengard needs a lot of money, and he needs that now. With the Devastation money, you can also, instead of making a hero, you can go for the second Uruk Pit and make sure to keep spamming units all the time. He has now enough power points for that. Let's see what he's gonna go for. I hope he's not gonna go for the Vipman of Dunland Summon. That would be a mistake. Devastation has been chosen. Not the best Devastation, but he has a lot of money now, which can be again invested into something like Sharku or Lourdes. He's gonna get some more units. He has to also deal with these tunnels as soon as possible, because Ave Have can actually use them. Look at this, this is almost level 2, guys. Uh, Gabriel, thank you so much for the follow and welcome. Appreciate that. Isengard has now a lot of units on the field, he keeps up the pressure. Uh, but the Goblin player is getting quite a lot of money from these tunnels pretty much for free in the last 2 3 minutes. Yes, uh, one Spider Pit level 2. Uh, he's going for the Spider Riders, but his command points kept. Uh, he has zero expansions around the fortress. With expansions, I mean the Barrow expansions. But look at the Isengard's player, guys. He was building like an outpost in the middle of the map. Three furnaces, clan setting, Uruk pit, a tower in the front side. Protect this area. Towers, they are not very strong, by the way, against half Swordsmen. Swordsman. The half Swordsmen Swordsman are gonna kill those towers very, very fast. Look at the damage they are able to deal. So, I mean, they are just buying some time at this point. They are not being very effective against the half Swordsman. Swordsman. Tower is gonna get destroyed. So it's like a back and forth game. I think this game can go either way still. We have a hero and his name is Sharku. Joining the battlefield from the Isengard's player Dread Reaper in the game number 2. Oh my godness, what was that? He was running it down with the spider riders into the pikemen. He lost so many of them guys. They are very strong units but they are also very expensive. They cost 600 each. And losing them is gonna give so much power points and so many experience points to the Isengard units as well. 700 command points now for Isengard. He's actually back into the game. 675 command points available for Ave Have. Sharku! Sharku is actually in a bad... Oh, never mind. He was actually able to get away. Sometimes you are trapped in a situation like this and if you if they are clumping against your hero, the clump against a hero is so effective, guys, you can burst down any hero in a second. Okay? I mean, he was able to see those tunnels, I think. I think. I don't know, Isengard's player has no vision control around this side. Again, the upgrade on the fortress might be very helpful. He's gonna go for another uh, battle tower uh, expansion around the fortress. But look at the units he has on the field. Like, he has so many units. He has pikemen. I mean, mainly he has pikemen. Which makes sense because he has to deal with these um, goblin spider riders. But the goblin player Ave Have is falling apart. He is losing tunnels left and right. Sharku is not being, you know, in a dangerous situation now. He is healthy. He can level up really fast. Level 3 is unlocked already. The towers are doing a great job. And the Isengard player is dominating now as expected the mid game. And I don't know what went wrong because it was looking so nice in the early game for Ave Have boys. He was having such a big lead. I think the spider allies summon was kinda questionable because he was not able to achieve anything from that summon and this is a waste. Like you are you know, investing 10 power points for a potential summon 
which doesn't pay off, you lose a lot of potential. And look at this, I mean, he's building in France more and more, you know, production buildings, clan setting level 1, Uruk pit here, there is another Uruk pit in the backside, so he's able to keep spamming quite a lot of units, which he can afford because he has 725 command points collected. You have Wildman of Dunland being summoned defensively from Ave Havi into the War Chant. So he's gonna try to win that fight. Also, Keith Bats are flying around. No, these are the Kree Bane from Isengard, actually. Keith Bats is also available for the Goblin player. He's gonna use it now. But I think it's just too late at this point. The fight is gonna be dominated by Isengard's player. The Keith Bats, they need to be careful because once the units are dead, the crossbowmen are automatically gonna, gonna target uh, the Keith Bats from the Goblin player and they're gonna kill that. And now Sharku is coming, Ave Ave has to be very careful, we know what Sharku can do in those kind of situations, he's, you know, killing, one-shotting, oof, everything here. And to be honest with you, I feel like the Goblin Spider Riders, they were like a waste of money. Because they were not achieving anything for Ave Ave, and yet they are so expensive. Maybe going for a hero like Azok, or, you know, God Kill the Goblin King for the leadership part, uh, might be a better choice. I can't tell. Charku is level 4 now, level almost 5. Level 7 is gonna unlock the Man Eater, which is gonna make him really strong and super tanky. 550 command points available for Ave Have. He has still those tunnels up on the field. I can't believe that, guys. Like, this is level 2, by the way. This is almost level 2. He's getting like 75, 125, and 175 command points only from these three tunnels for a really long time. And maybe that's the way you want to play with goblins against Isengard. You want to expand offensively, because this is not going to be expected, as Isengard's player is constantly attacking the goblin player from, you know, on this side of the map. We have now the Wildman of Dunland summoned this time from the Isengard's player. And I think this is going to hurt. This is going to hurt him big time, because he has not enough units to defend. He has to kill the pikemen first. Even though there are not many pikemen, so this spider riders, they can go for a potential trample. It's a risky move, but he needs to risk the biscuit anyway. Because those white men, they are not only destroying those uh, tunnels, no, but they are also stealing money constantly from Ave Have. Look his money. Like, he's very poor now at this point. Charco has to disengage, he's level 5. If also Azok on the field somewhere, I could see Azok before, I think. And maybe not, maybe I was wrong. This tunnel is going to be taken down. There is only one tunnel remaining in the front side. I mean, this one is almost down as well. But I don't see a single level 2 tunnel beside the one here, which was building offensively. 10 power points collected from, uh, from the Goblin player now. After Wildman, Spider Elias, Keith Bats and Warchant. He keeps attacking with those Spiderlings, which is nice. 625 command points. Now he has no expansions around the fortress. The older command points he's being able to collect so far are from actual tunnels around the map. Isengard's player has 575 command points. He was just using Devastation for the second time. He has collected 7 power points after Vision of Palantir, Kribi in Warchant, Wildman of Dunland and the Devastation. And this game isn't over yet, guys. Like, it looks great for the Isengard's player, but I think this game can still turn around. Warchant is being used from the Goblin player on these half roll Swordsmen. The level 2 furnace has been taken down. Don't underestimate their damage, by the way, Sharku. You can trample them down and they can actually turn on you and they can deal quite a lot of damage, especially with level 2. Because after the buff is gone, he can always use the charge attack. He's gonna try to kill this uh, land setting, which is gonna take him a lot of time. Charku should be fine at this point because there are not many units left anymore. We have some fights going on around this side. And that's the power of Isengard army because, you know, in those 1v1 situations against goblins, every unit, you know, from the weakest, in this case those are Wildmen of Dunland, to the strongest, they are always gonna win against the goblins. Always. Charku has to be careful. He's taking some damage. This tunnel here is gonna be taken down next. And I like the way that... Isengard player is attacking from multiple sides, but I don't like the way that he's not being able to see the tunnels, because look at this tunnel, guys. This is level almost 3. So Ave Havi is getting so much free money from these tunnels. Level 2, level 2, level 2, almost level 3. The only reason why Ave Havi is still in this game, trust me on that one, are from these tunnels, guys. 
which are there for the majority of the game now. Isengard's player is going for the war chant. Yes, a lot of units on the field, even some crossbowmen in the backside. Those spider riders, they need to make something happen now. They need to go for a risky move, which would not be even that risky because let's be honest, there are not many pikemen or not enough pikemen to protect. After all, Swarton are very tank units. At some point, Red Reaper, the Isengard's player, has to be wondering, has to be, has to wonder why is Goblin player... Oof, the Watcher is coming in clutch, ladies and gentlemen. Wasn't it as, wasn't as effective as it should be. Isengard's now going for the, for the industry. And that's the power of Isengard's economy, right? So he has now, what, Devastation Industry. He has Wipen of the Unland units, they have a Pillage ability, which means also more resources for every time when they attack an enemy structure. And if this is not gonna be enough, he can always go for the Devastation once he has 15 power points collected. And with that being said, he can actually, you know, go for like 2, 3, 4 Uruk Pits at some point and keep spamming those units 24 7. That's always a possibility with Isengard once you reach the. Oh, Sharku is running it down! And those kind of mistakes, he needs to avoid them. He needs to avoid them. I like the way that the Goblin player is actually keeps pressuring this all the time. And Threat Reaper still doesn't. Know that there are tunnels, like free money for Ave Have, just like that. He finally sees one of the level 3 tunnels from Ave Have. He might be able to take it down. I mean, he has to now check the map, right? He has to check the map. He needs to think, you know, like, how is this possible that Ave Have has so much money? How can he make or keep making more units all the time? Level 3 tunnel is going to be taken down, but during all this time a level 2 furnace is going down as well. The level 3 furnace here with the industry has to be saved from the Isengard's player. It's going to be difficult for this units to destroy this one, because there are some expansions around the fortress. This furnace is also in the range of the fortress, and it's a level 3 furnace after all, with like 3,500 HP, and it is also able to shoot down the enemy units, so it's going to be hard. But the builder from Isengard is going to be taken down. And yeah, you can see yourself after some, you know, minutes of the game, players, they used to make a bit more mistakes in, in the early game. And I think that's obvious because everyone knows how to open a game, how to play the early 10 minutes. Because not many games are lasting very long in Rise of the Witch King, they keep making mistakes after like 10-15 minutes of the game, you know? White Man of Thunland is being used now defensively from Ave Have into the War Chant. Those spider riders, I feel like they are not very useful, so he should maybe stop making them. Or use them for the map control fights. He's going now for another clan setting in the front side of the fortress. He has a clan setting and Uruk pit here as well, so he will have in total 4 production buildings, guys. That's gonna give him the chance to spam multiple units all the time. The furnace is going down, Isengard's plane is gonna drop down to 650 command points after this one. The Vestation is almost back up, 6 power points collected by Dread Reaper. On the other side, we have 725 command points collected. He was building another tunnel here. This one is almost level 2. This ones are almost level 3. They are still remaining on the field. He might be able to destroy this Uruk pit in the front side. Let's see if this is going to be the case. What a fiesta game. Sharku is back on the field. Furnaces are getting destroyed left and right. The furnace here is going to be taken down as well. He can go for a trample on these crossbowmen right after. He has a chance to do that. There are no... Pikemen around this area. But Isengard's player is going for a, for a massive counter-attack. The Watcher is on cooldown, 11 power points almost collected. The Vipeman of Thunder is now being used from Dreadsley for offensively. He wanna go for an all-out fight and deal as much damage as he possibly can. The Vestation is being used as well. The Fissure is getting bursted down, by the way. It is 3000 HP barracks from the Goblin faction. Heath pets are being used from the Goblin player for the debuff. And the units are clamped so much around this side. And I think they won't be able to deal much more damage. The power points are rising. And because of the Watcher, he can go for the 25. And he's only 12 and a half power points away from that point. Isengard's player, because he was going for the Devastation, he was going for the Wildman, he was going for the Industry. He needs to pick 15 power points first before he can go for the 25. And I don't need to explain you guys how impactful those 25 power points are in the game. Especially if the Goblin player is going for the Summoned Dragon. It can literally change the outcome of the game within a second. And I'm telling you, I don't think what's gonna happen in the end of the game. I think it's a back and forth game. I, anyone can lose and anyone can win this game, I think. But if the goblin player can keep these tunnels until the end of the game, I would be just very surprised. Because look at this, level 3, 
This one is gonna hit level 3 very soon as well. And imagine the goblin player losing them like 5 minutes ago. He would be out of the game already. He would be out of the game. He would have no money left. Charku is almost level 7. That's gonna unlock the money eater ability. No heroes at all from the goblin player all game long, by the way. No Azok, no Gurkill the Goblin King, no Shilov, no Drogov. Nothing. And this is gonna hurt. And I think Dread Reaper has to ask himself, right? Where are those goblins coming from? Like, they are coming always from this side, but I'm actually surprised that he doesn't even check this area. The level 2 furnace here has been taken down. The level 2 furnace here has been taken down as well. Now Isengard's player is losing quite a lot of money left and right. He's dropping down to 650 command points. His command points kept right now, guys. He's trying to attack this side of the map constantly, and he's also being able to deal decent amount of economical damage, yes. But this is just not enough to finish off the game. If finally a battle expansion around the fortress, he's gonna go for another one, another expansion, which is a tower expansion to keep this area safe. Charku is chasing down those spider riders all the time, as he's a great counter unit or counter hero to these units. The Watcher is gonna be ready for the next defense. It can be used around this area, we gotta keep an eye on this one. I think he's gonna use the Watcher here. I'm pretty sure he should be using it, maybe. Maybe he's gonna try to defend himself without using it. It looks like it's nice trample, by the way, from Ave Ave and his Goblin Spider Riders. The Warchan is being just too late. And it won't change the fact that Isengard will lose this fight. That means he will have the Watcher for the next big attack from Isengard available, which can be enough to defend the attack. And Isengard finally, finally was able to see this tunnel. And he will also be able to see this tunnel. But this tunnel, unbelievable, it is still, you know, unseen from Isengard and it is still remaining on the field. The Watcher, he's actually killing more units of himself from the Watcher. I don't know what happened there. No, it was the Watcher from Isengard. Okay, I take it back. I take it back. My bad, guys. The Watcher is still on cooldown. I, I'm blind. My bad. But look at the power points. Sharku has been taken down once again. The Watcher was doing a great job from Isengard. But, it, you know, there is no follow-up. There is not enough or, you know, much left to deal the damage he's looking for. Especially around this area, it's going to be difficult. Because look at this. One, two, three Goblin Caves, Spider Pits level two, Fissure. So he has 5 production buildings under his control and he can get so many units on the field all of a sudden. That Reaper is going to be potentially able to see this. Let's see. He's not able to see this. I can't believe it. This tunnel is going to be there even tomorrow, guys. And Isengard's player has um, 850 command points collected, 900 command points available for the Goblin player. He has 21 power points collected though. We're going to have a fight around this side. And I think at this point of the game, he's gonna just try to go for the 25. What a nice game in the game number 2, and this is best of 5, so we are not done yet, guys. Take your seat, enjoy your stay. The Fissure is gonna be taken down next, 23 power points collected now. The Goblin player is being able to push Isengard back from this side. The Ulda might be in... No, this is from Ave Ave, I take it back. These tunnels are still remaining on the field as well, this one is level 2. We have small fights going in the middle of the map, but, uh, you know, Isengard... This outpost here, this Uruk pit and clan setting is now on the field for a very long time. And Isengard has, to con has the control of the middle. But 25 power points collected now by Ave Ave. And uh, Dread Reaper still needs around 14 power points to be able to summon his own dragon. There we go, boys. Balrog is gonna be summoned now from the goblin player Ave Ave. Let's see how much damage he will be able to deal. I don't like the Balrog summon. Because you wanna actually use Balrog as like a as like the Watcher, because the you know the damage you are able to deal from the summon might one shot the entire army from Isengard. So he's gonna go for the Breath Fire. Uh, potentially here he should be using it, I think, to kill the Uruk Pit and the level three furnace. Charku, the, the second he comes out, he has to see a sh <laughs> Balrog who is dealing a lot. Look at he's dying in a second, boys. He needs to use the Man Eater now to be able to regenerate his health. Needs to be careful. Wildman of Talon are being summoned as well. It looks like Ave Ave want to commit on this fortress. Can he take it down? That is the question of the day. Charku has to use Man Eater. I don't know why he's not using that. If he uses that, it's going to heal up Charku big time. In the meantime, we have also a fight. Lutz is level 5, has the leadership unlocked. 14 power points, almost 15 power points collected by the Isengard player. He has still 925 command points available, so he has great amount of resource income. 
that I think the fortress is not gonna make it out alive. Look, the money Ave Ave is able to steal with the Whiteman of Dunland. Warchan is gonna be used just to make sure to be able to finish off this fortress. Breath Fire is gonna be used and the fortress is been taken down. And that is huge. Red Reaper is gonna call it GG. I don't know why. He should not give up. Maybe he should because he's gonna lose his area as well. I don't know. Fiesta game, game number two, and the score is 2-0 for Ave Ave. What a nice game. It was looking so good for the Red Reaper. What a nice game. Red Reaper versus Ave Ave, game two. And we're gonna jump right into the game three. If Ave Ave wins that upcoming game, he will be in the finals of the uh, winner bracket against Fairy. And if Red Reaper doesn't want that to happen, he has to now win three games in a row. Beautiful. The game number three is all about to begin, guys. We are this time on the map Plains of Linden. The same matchup, Isengard against Goblins, after a fantastic game number two in the best of five series for the semi-finals of the Battle for Christmas tournament for BFME to the Rise of the Witch King, which is a cash prize tournament of $175, guys. Let's get it started. We have the Goblin player Ave Ave at the top side of the map and his opponent at the bottom side is the Red Isengard player Dread Reaper, who was almost doing it in the game number 2 to make the score even. Now he is 2-0 behind and in order to win this semi-finals he now has to win 3 games in a row including this one. Because Ave Ave is only one win away from getting to the finals of the winner bracket against Fairy in the best of seven. Two tunnels and Vision of Palantir once again, you know, he was choosing that ability two games in a row as well. Two furnaces, three furnaces, never really change a running system for Ave Ave, why would he? But he changes this time. He has two tunnels into the Goblin Cave, into the third tunnel. And we have two furnaces, three furnaces coming up for Dread Reaper into the clan setting. Like in the game number one, like in the game number two, he does the same thing. Alright. So let's see. We will have goblin warriors coming on the field soon. Um, no spider pit start this time, unlike in the game number one and number two. Uh, I, even though I was thinking that spider links were doing a great job in the last two games, let's see how the normal goblin start is gonna work. We have another furnace coming up for the Isengard player. And clan sitting. Um, you're gonna see some Whiteman of Thunland against the Goblin Warriors. And again, the Whiteman of Thunland are gonna be able to win the 1v1 fights. But trust me on that one, it's not gonna be a 1v1 fight at this point. Because Goblin player will have much more Goblins on the field than the Isengard player will have Whiteman. He's going for another tunnel around this side. Four defensive tunnels actually. Where is the second builder? Uh, there he is. Might go for even a Goblin Cave number 3. Let's see what he's gonna go for. Isengard's play is expanding very nicely. Building up another clan setting now. So he will go for multiple White Men of Thunland early on. Which is nice. I like this more than going for the Uruk pit actually. Because yes, Crossbow Mine are a great counter unit to the Goblin Warriors. They are very efficient. But I feel like White Men of Thunland, they are also really cost efficient units. And since they are able to win the 1v1 fights against goblins, you can also go for multiple clan settings early on. And that's gonna be the case. Is this the last game today? I don't know, maybe we're gonna get some more series after this one. I don't know who's around, maybe we can get the games between Sauron against Les Lottier. Let's see. Hopefully we might get to see more games. By Palanti instead of Kraus, Kraus, someone tell him please. I don't know, he was going also for Palanti in the game number 1 and number 2 Irby. Whiteman of Dunland, Whiteman of Dunland, we're gonna see Whiteman of Dunland early on against the Goblin Warriors. Three Goblin Caves up on the field for the Goblin player Ave Ave at the top side. There is a tunnel coming up for him as well. And you can tell me whatever you want. I feel like the win condition of Ave Ave were those three tunnels healed up offensively in the previous game, which were giving him so many command points and resources for free for the entire game. That's gonna be a massive attack. And remember, Isengard has Palantir. Which is on cooldown, and the goblin player has war chant, which can be used on these goblins to make them much stronger. And that's gonna be also the case. Let's see how much damage he will be able to deal now, guys. And as explained before, it's not gonna be a 1v1 situation, it's gonna be always 1v2, 1v3, 1v4. 
And he needs to body block now. Use the hold ground stance ideally. Because you want to make sure to survive long enough. Since he's using the aggressive stance, those goblins, they're gonna die very fast. And that's why Ave Javi is gonna try, obviously, to just deal as much damage as he possibly can. The furnace in the front side is gonna be taken down during all this time. One of the tunnels from Ave Javi is going down as well. There is no torches purchased on this white man just yet, but he was able to steal a lot of money and the rubble is gonna be destroyed next as well. But look at this, guys. Furnace down. Furnace down. I think this furnace is gonna be taken down as well. It's gonna be close, maybe not. You shot no, never mind actually, he will be able to save that. That's really important for Isengard to keep this furnace alive because he was losing already one of the starting furnaces. Luckily, he has still a lot of furnaces. He has 400 command points, the goblin player, and 550 command points for the Isengard player Dread Reaper. But the furnace in the front side is gonna be taken down. There is no protection, so it's gonna be definitely going down. But I like the way Isengard is expanding around the top side. However, you know, losing the furnaces like 20 seconds after building them up is gonna make you lose a lot of money. So maybe not expanding too much, but trying to protect the furnaces you have under your control is the way to go. But I'm not sure. We shall see. I don't know why no links by Major of X. You know, Ave Ave is gonna try something different. We have four <laughs> goblin caves into the fifth one. So trust me, we're gonna, be gonna see goblins all around the map, boys. And uh, Dread Reaper was able to, you know, to see this tunnel here around the bottom right side. He might be able to destroy that. I don't know. Let's see. Yeah, it's it's gonna go down. It's gonna go down. Close, close, but not close enough for Ave Ave. He was almost able to protect this, but he was able to get quite a lot of goblins on the field. Four power points collected by Dread Reaper. He needs like less than half a power point now for the war chant to be unlocked. And the goblin spam is real, guys. The goblin spam is real. The work pit is up on the field. Upgrade into the level 2 is incoming for the work riders. They're gonna be nice against the goblin spam. And he's gonna go for the Kribane instead of war chant. I like this because remember the goblins, they are dealing not enough damage. And with this, they're gonna lose a lot of damage and they're gonna lose armor as well. They're gonna die like flies. But Warchant situationally can be a better choice, especially if you can get to the set of the Goblin player with those Whitemen of Dunland. And you can Warchant them, they're gonna hit like an absolute truck and destroy everything around it. Cave Bats is being used from the Isengard player. Um, he can win this fight, I think. Like mentioned before, the Goblins are dying very, very fast. But the Arches in the backside are doing work, actually. Whitemen are gonna disengage now from the Goblins and try to kill the Arches instead. Does he also... No, he doesn't go for the cave bats. He's actually trying to go for the spider allies once again. Isengard is being able to hold himself quite nicely. This furnace is still remaining on the field. This one is almost level 2. This one is gonna hit level 2 on very soon as well. He's creeping the work layer now. He's expanding very nicely. And he's also being able to keep those furnaces alive. This game is looking much better for Dread Reaper than the previous two games. But even, you know, also the game number 2 was looking for him really nicely early on. So we, we know everything is possible in Rise of the Witch King. I believe in shenanigans, guys. I believe in Fiesta. And we might see a great turnaround once again from Ave Ave, like in the previous game. Because he's almost uh, there for the Spider Allies summon. Goblin Warriors, like a lot of them. Warchan has been used on these units. The War Riders, they need to be careful. Because you don't want to trample straight into the army. Because you're going to get slowed down with your units. They can't move and they're going to die very fast. You want to go for a flank damage. You want to ideally, like, go for like a like a need for speed kind of thing. You know, like, attack a couple of these units over and over again instead of trying to kill every single one of them at the same time. Okay. Um, the good thing for Ave Ave is that he has so many units he can maintain the pressure. But the problem is he has only goblins on the field. Goblins, they are effective early on, but they're gonna fall off big time, especially if Dread Reaper is gonna get some more work riders on the field. And who dares to leave a trash on the ground? Spider Allies is gonna be used offensively. And let's see how much economical damage he will be able to deal. The glass hitting has been taken down already, the furnace is gonna go definitely down. We are getting more work riders on the field, we have now 3 battalions in total. They're gonna take some more damage from the Poison Blades of the Goblin Warriors. The spiders are moving. The level 2 Furnace will be potentially their target. 
This one is still quite slow. He might be able to destroy these two furnaces, by the way. That would be the dream. It's gonna lower down the command points of Isengard by 150 if he loses these two furnaces. This one is gonna go definitely down. Yeah, I think he's also gonna be able potentially to, to destroy this one. That's a risky move because the spiders from the summon, they are very squishy units. Like, they die very fast to the archers, including the arrow damage from the fortress. So you need to be careful with them. But the furnace is gonna not make it out alive. And as mentioned before, Isengard player is losing 150 command points. Now he has the same command points collected like Ave Have has. 500 it is. The power points collected from Have Have. Uh, the spiders are gonna be gone soon. The builder has to be careful. Hopefully he's not gonna lose the builder. He's gonna now try to deal some damage. We have spiderlings coming now from the spider pits level 1. Nice trample with the war riders. They need to be careful though. They are very low. He has so many of these on the field, by the way. We have in total 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 goblin caves from Ave Have. But he keeps losing those goblins left and right constantly. The Vestation has been used from Isengard's player. That's huge. That's gonna give him a lot of money, which can be, again, invested into something like Sharku or Lourdes. I think Sharku is the way to go. Because now he has so many war riders on the field, unlike in the previous two games. And once he gets Sharko level 3 with the leadership, he can make those war riders very, very strong. With a potential double buff from the whole ability and the leadership from Sharko. And then you can also use the Creebane to debuff the enemy units. And those war riders are gonna be very, very strong. If a lot of white men moving forward, there is a furnace in the middle of the map, even. But Isengard has to make sure to expand around this side and also around this side. Because these sides are pretty much empty. Isengard can still expand his command points capped now. Has to make sure to build more furnaces in order to be able to make more units. Warchan, big Warchan is being used from the Goblin player Ave Have. Nice trample by the way with the Shark Riders, I like it. Work Riders, I mean Sharku Riders I wanted to see for some reason. 600 command points now for the Isengard player. 575 for the Goblin player. But the problem is, Isengard has strong units on the field. And the majority of the command points from the goblin player are goblin warriors, you know? And you can see yourself the command points are dropping down in a second because goblins are dying so fast. Okay, spider... Spiderlings against warpacks. Cave pads are flying around. This is from the goblin player, by the way. Isengard's player is also... Nah, he was not using that. It's on cooldown still. 600 command points, and I think that's fine for Isengard, because against goblins you want to keep the fights around this side, which is fine for you, because you want to make sure that this area is protected. We have now two clan settings, work pits level 2, and finally a Uruk pit up on the field for the pikemen and crossbowmen. And remember, for the majority of the game, the Red Reaper was playing without a Uruk pit. Uruk pit. He was playing only with clan settings and work packs, and I mean work riders from the work pits level 2. But this game isn't over yet, guys. Trust me on that one. We might see some Spider Riders later on uh, from the Spider Pits level 2 as well. And, uh, you know, Ave Have keeps pressuring all the time with the Goblin Warriors, but he's not being able to achieve too much. I take it back, the builder from Dread Reaper has been just taken down. Which is super nice. Warchant is now being used, and remember Warchant from Ave Have, the Goblin player, is still on cooldown, as well as the Keith Bats. And uh, Dread Reaper is gonna have his own Keef Bats available for the next big fight as well. And we have finally a hero for the first time in this series from Ave Have, and his name is Azok. I like Azok quite a lot, especially with the pillage ability from level 2. He's gonna make you earn so much more money from killing those enemy units. Nice clumping, by the way, from Dread Reaper. Vision of Palantir is gonna be used to scout the area. Imagine a worm here, by the way, guys. Or like a summoned dragon. You can kill everything around this area in a second. <laughs> Especially a worm, like with the area damage. You can place them here and you can kill the tunnel and these three goblin caves in like two seconds. 600 command points available for the Isengard's player. It's gonna drop down now because he's gonna lose one of the furnaces. His command points kept. Can't make more units at this point. Azok is gonna get potentially level 2, but he has to deal with so many units. That's crazy. Isengard can also go for... Ah, never mind. He was actually going for the Warchan as well. Warchan, Vision of Palantir, Creebane into the Devastation. Five power points collected afterwards. And the Goblin player has around ten power points collected after the Spiders, Cave Bats and the Warchan. Spider Lynx are doing a great job for the map control. They keep killing those furnaces. 
trying to keep Threat Reaper checked constantly, which is very important in RTS games, also in Rise of the Witch King, to fight for the map control. I think that's the most important thing. Using Wildman of Dunland in this situation might be a mistake, but remember he has the buff and debuff advantage, right? Because the buff and debuff from Isengard is on cooldown, so if he can use the Wildman here, I still think it would be a bad idea, because the Warcry is gonna trample them down the second they get spawned, and they're gonna die pretty much instantly. The Wildman of Dunland summon might be a mistake. Azok is leveling up to level 2 finally, that's gonna make him earn money from killing those units. We have some torches upgraded, Wildman of Dunland. Cave Pets is being used from the Goblin player defensively. Wildman is still awaitable, he's not gonna use it. He has also Spider Elias summon ready at the same time. So if he can actually defend this attack and go for a big attack, including the Cave Pet, I mean the Wildman and the Spider Riders, Spider Elias, I mean, sorry, it can be devastating. The problem is, he was using Warchant for defensive purposes as well. So, unfortunately for the Goblin player Ave Have, he won't have the buff ability available for the attack he's going to go for, you know. Valentia is gonna be used now. He's able to see the units coming from Ave Have. Uh, Dread Reaper has 750 command points collected. The Devastation is gonna be ready very soon. That's gonna give him a chunk of money instantly. There are no heroes so far on the field from the Isengard player, by the way, guys. Unlike in the previous games, he keeps spamming units left and right. Double class hitting, Uruk Pits, uh, which is level 1, and Work Pits level 2. Okay. Nice one. Uh, but I don't know about that. It, was it really necessary to use Borchan there defensively? Maybe it was. We will have Wildman of Dunland being used now from Ave Have offensively. But that's what I was trying to say. Look at this. Like, they're gonna die the second they get summoned. Because the work riders are gonna counter them so hard. But on the other side, for some reason, Isengard's player decides to use his own Wildman of Dunland defensively. Maybe he wanna deal with those spider allies, but the furnace level 2 is gonna definitely be taken down. And yeah, the goblin player is still in the game. <clears throat> but this game is looking so nice at this point for the Isengard's player. And we have a high potential of seeing the game number 4 in the best of 5 series, if Threat Reaper can win this game against Ave Have. Okay, the Furnace here has been taken down. The Furnace in the backside is gonna be taken down as well. The Spider Links are getting stuffed around this area as we know. They are just like Elven units, they can get invisible when around the trees. And nice economical damage dealt. Enforcing the Isengard's player to use the weapon of Dunland defensively was also nice. They're gonna be gone soon. Uh, we have half Swatman Swordman now coming up on the field from the Fissure level 1. half Swatman Swordman are, I think, a great choice right now from Ave Have. Why? Because they are not only nice against Wildman, against Urukai, but also against Work Riders, since they can't get trampled down. Five Goblin Caves still. No Barrow expansions around the fortress, so 600 command points from actual tunnels. This tunnel here in the front side is almost down. He has multiple tunnels around this side, but every single one of them beside this one is level 1. This one is level 3, that's why it's so important to keep this one alive. Okay, the Wildmen are gonna be almost gone. 10 power points collected now by the Goblin player Ave Havi. The 15 can lead to the Watcher. Watcher can be very effective against the Isengard army to one-shot the full army. If summoned, nice, and you no, know, timing needs to be nice, Isengard's player needs to be grouped, then the Watcher can defend a full attack by himself. But if we take a look into the minimap at the bottom left side of our screen, we can see Isengard's player Dread Reaper has the control of this game on the map Plains of Linden. I mean, it can still go either way, don't get me wrong, because we have seen that also in the previous game on the map Westworld, but I think not even on the map Westfold, Isengard's player did have such a big lead like he has right now. Ave Have is gonna fight until the very end, we know that. He's gonna try to get potentially the 15 power points unlocked, he's only one power point away from that point. Azok is running for his life, great battle rage is on cooldown, he can't make it out alive, he's trying to make it through spider links in order to, you know, survive with Sharku. He might be able actually to survive that. With level 6, He's gonna have to crack the whip, which is gonna give experience to the selected units. He was able to survive that, which is really nice. Okay, uh, the Watcher is gonna be ready soon, and it can be used around this area, for example. Um, Azok is gonna heal up over time. 
After all, Swordsmen are doing a great job against Pikemen as well. Yeah, and once they are level 2, the charge attack can be used and replace the War Chant. Might use the... Now, he's gonna go for the Worm, actually. Okay, he's gonna go for the Worm Summon. Because he realizes, okay, I need to deal damage to the economy of Isengard. He's just getting too much money. And with that statement, Ave Havi is 100% right. Isengard is just getting too much money at this point. And with the Worm, you might be able to deal quite a lot of damage to the economy. Ideally, you want to use the Worm in a point like this, for example, right? When you attack this furnace from this side, you can also hit the Uruk Pit. You can make sure to destroy multiple uh, structures at the same time. Azok is recovering. He's almost full health again. Isengard is going for the attack. Um, you know, not going for the Watcher is also risky because you have to deal now with these two armies at the same time without the Watcher. Which is not looking very easy thing uh, to do for Avihave right now. We have um, Isengard, quite a lot of units on the field. The Worm is still ready, he's not summoning it yet. 4 power points collected afterwards. 16 power points collected by Isengard and he's gonna go for the Freezing Rain and I like it. Goblin player can't counter that because he was not going for Darkness. So the Freezing Rain is gonna nullify the enemy leadership which is not existing anyway. But he's gonna permanently lose 25% damage and 25% armor on the full map. Which is a lot. On the other side, you can't use the Kribane anymore because the debuff does not stack. So you can have only one active debuff, you know, actively at the same time. Which makes sense because imagine you can stack that. You can make the enemy units literally like zero damage. <laughs> that would be kind of OP. The Worm is being summoned now finally. The Work Pits level 2 is gonna be his target. Uh, because it's a level 2, you know, production building, it is able to withstand three attacks of the Worm. But... Still, you know, I think Worm is one of the best summons against structures. Um, not against units, not very good against units, but very good against structures. Yeah. Alright. I mean, I think... Look at the minimap, guys, at the bottom left side. Like, Red Reaper got this game, and I think we're gonna see a game number 4. Uh, because if Red Reaper wins that, the score is gonna be 2-1, still in favor of Ave Havi. But we have already seen yesterday, like Ave Havi was losing 1-0 and he managed to win two games in a row, everything is possible. I've seen that quite a lot, that players were losing 2-0, 3-0 and then being able to win 2-3-4 games in a row and end up winning the series. But I like the games between those two players because the games are very close. And I think, you know... Those kind of games are so rare in Rise of the Witch King. Most of the time we see games being done in like 10, 12, 13, 5, you know, 15 minutes at max. And that's why I'm so excited when I see games lasting like 20, 25, 30 minutes. Because we can actually see a full potential of a faction with all the summons, all the different types of units, which is always nice. 675, 675 command points for Isengard, 450 for the Goblin player. I think that's the final attack. I don't see a coming back from this situation for Avi Havi anymore. He has not many units left on the field. He has only Goblin Warriors inside the tunnel. He's getting more Goblin Warriors from the five Goblin Caves he has left on the field since the beginning of the game pretty much. But Goblins all alone are not gonna be able to deal with Isengard in long terms. The transition was made just too late into After All Swordsman and when he was going for the transition he was just not having the money to maintain the five goblin caves, the spider pit, and the fissure at the same time. He could not afford this kind, you know, this much of resource investment after being down to 500, 400 command points over and over again. But Ave Have is fighting still for the map control. He's trying his best to deal as much damage as possible. He is not gonna give up until it's over. Let's see. Alright, actually look at this damage he's able to deal. Can he destroy the level 3 furnace with the industry buff on it? 16 power points collected by Ave Havia by the way guys, after the worm. And like in the previous game, that Reaper was going for the industry and devastation. 
He's getting so much money, even though he was, you know, being on low command points because Devastation was used, I think, I believe like three times now. And every time you use Devastation, you get around 2,000 resources. So a power point ability, which can give you around six to 10,000 resources in a single game, is so nice to have. Beautiful. All right, so I don't know. This game is not over yet. It, it, I think it's gonna turn around like the last game potentially, right? Because look at the power points from Ave Ave. He has 19 power points collected after the worm. Like he's very close for the 25 guys, and 25 can easily turn this game around. And because of the attack from Ave Ave, which was able to deal decent amount of damage to the economy from the Isengard played Red Reaper. This game can still turn around. Maybe that is gonna be also the case. Dragon OP, yeah, the summon dragon in this, you know, from the worm into the summon dragon can, you know, can crush everything around this area. Let, let's be honest, you can kill everything around this area in a second. Like you use worm here, you kill these structures in one second. You kill the level three furnace. You use the worm here, kill those these two buildings in a second. Yeah, the worm, uh, I mean, the dragon is going to be very effective. And, you know, he's very close to that point. Like, 20, 21 power points collected. Beautiful. Burnus is going down. And yeah, Ave Ave is being able to bring the fight more to the side of Isengard's player, and that's so nice to see. And you can see that yourself, right? I feel like Ave Ave is the one who is not losing his focus in the late game. Like Dread Reaper, also in the previous game on the map Westfold, was doing a great job early mid game until very late. But Ave Ave was actually outperforming him in the late game. I mean. He has still a big advantage, don't get me wrong, like he is pushing him back from the middle. He's, unlike in the last game, he's making sure to destroy those tunnels left and right, the Watcher! This is from Isengard, right? Yeah, it's from Isengard's player. Actually, ah, we have a vent for the darkness, okay, he went for the darkness instead of the 25. Uh, but the darkness was kinda used... Yeah. I think the darkness is active, yes, he was using the darkness right after the rain. The rain's effect is gone, and on top of that, the goblin units, they have now the spell, which is constantly active, making those goblin warriors, half troll swordsmen, just much, much stronger. But the problem is, he has barely any units around anymore. And he was not going for the summon dragon, that's gonna delay his dragon summon. Big time, the watcher was coming in clutch from the Isengard's player, making sure to kill those units in a single second. And I think that might be it, guys. I mean, I appreciate the fact that Ave Ave is fighting until the very end. Like, remember the first game, Dread Reaper was calling it GG in the first 8 minutes, you know? Okay, the furnace is gonna be taken down here as well. 900 command points collected, 950 command points collected for the Isengard's player. Full command points almost, 550 command points only collected for Ave Ave. You know, if you don't want to go for the Dragon Summon, I think I think Scavenger might be a solid choice for the Goblin Infection. Especially, imagine if you would be picking Scavenger early on. You would get so much benefit of that, right? He would kill constantly units, you get money all the time, and you will never ever run out of resources. But if the Goblin player can stall the game and go for multiple half troll Swordsmen with the Darkness, with the War Chant, and also with potential upgrades later on, which seems to be, you know, very hard for now because he can't afford that, he has no money. Maybe some lumber mills can be helpful to get some money, you know, from the from the trees. But you can see yourself, Dread Reaper is struggling big time to finish off this game, you know? He, he's struggling big time. And Darkness is gonna be active pretty much all the time now. Because Darkness was used at the same time, or like 5 seconds after Isengard player was using the Freezing Rain. So if Dread Reaper is gonna use the Freezing Rain again, 
you know, Ave Ave can just use the Darkness and cover that rain and get more damage on and armor on these units. Because Darkness is gonna make your unit units deal 33% more damage and 33% more armor, which is impressive constantly on full map. Which can be very efficient on this half troll swatman units. Okay, 22 power points collected for the goblin player. 550 command points available. On the other side, 800 command points collected for Dread Reaper. 11, almost 12 power points available. But this game isn't over yet. That's the funny thing about that. Maybe you need some siege weapons at this point. Get some ballistas or, you know, at least some rams. Because I feel like the Isengard's player is struggling to finish off the game. Big time. 12 power points. The power points are rising. Okay. This tunnel here is going to be taken down next. 850 command points. 13 power points collected. On the other side, the worm is available for the goblin player as well. 24 power points. The worm is going to be used. Nice worm summon. Hey, that's nice. I mean, it's not dealing too much damage, but look at this. 25 power points collected now. He can now go for, go for the summon dragon, right? Yeah, he has the power points to do that. And that's going to be the case, guys. Summon dragon, ladies and gentlemen, is coming in clutch on top of the war riders. And... Not dealing too much damage either, knocking them down, uh, disabling them. But you will see what this can, this little Drake can do actually against the structures, guys. That's gonna be crazy. And in combination with the worm, that's gonna be a nice wombo combo because you can end up killing so many structures. The spider allies as well. Look at the range, though. That's crazy, guys. Oh, you know, only with power point abilities now from the goblin player, he will deal so much damage to the Isengard's player. That's gonna be crazy. During all this time, the war riders are coming from Isengard for the attack. Isengard also needs only 7 power points for his own big summon. The fire drake is gonna be gone soon. And I was expecting a bit more damage, but still a decent amount of damage dealt. Only one production building left, and that's this clan setting level 1. The Isengard, never mind, he has one in the front side as well, so he has two clan settings in total, but no more work pit and no more Uruk pit as well, guys. The spiders are being still active on the map, they're gonna kill multiple furnaces left and right, and if Isengard can't make it happen with this attack, he will struggle to bring more reinforcements any soon. He has to build now multiple production buildings in the middle of the map in order to be able to bring more sport units on the field, but on the bright side for Dread Reaper, now the worst thing happened already, he already was, you know, facing against spider allies, facing against the worm, facing against the dragon. Now, all these abilities are gonna be on a huge cooldown for Ave Ave, but your time to shine is gonna come eventually, once you have 25 power points collected. If Threat Reaper won't take another 15 power points, exactly, that might be always the case, but I don't think that's gonna be, that's gonna happen now, because he has now around 22 power points collected. 750 command points available still against 450. Ave Ave has barely any units around anymore. He can't afford to make more units at this point. He's so much down on resources. And yeah, 22 power points. And he might not even need the Drake at this point because he has like units coming from. Look at this. Three production buildings in the middle of the map. There is one more here. He's gonna go for the work pit once again. He's gonna potentially go for the upgrade. And that's the economical advantage of Isengard faction in the late game, guys. And trust me, I think Devastation is so powerful, right? Especially if you get it early unlocked and if the games are lasting that long and you get the chance to use Devastation like 5, 6, 7 times in a game, you get so much extra money from this. Compare that with each other, right? You have Devastation, you have the Industry. You have two power point abilities which are giving you so much money and Goblin Play has none of them. The Goblin Play has to literally make sure to keep those tunnels alive constantly in order to be able to get the money from Isengard. Not even that would be... You know, Spider Blinks level 5. We don't see that very often. I like it. Isengard's economical advantage in the late game is so nice for this faction. Darkness is being used after the rain. Darkness is being active now. But it's just not enough. The power points from Isengard are now 25. We all know what that means. Imagine that in a situation like this, guys. Look at this. He's gonna go for a Dragon Strike. He's gonna use it here, and look at this beautiful fiesta. Oof, nice. So, everything is getting blown up. GG, and well played from Dread Reaper. We're gonna see a game number four, ladies and gentlemen.
very well played. He was losing the same matchup, you know, three, two times in a row and now managed to win the third game. Ave Ave versus Dread Reaper. Game three. Beautiful. And let's get the game number four started. The game number four is all about the beginning the best of five series. This time it's gonna be a Goblin Mirror, ladies and gentlemen. The first three matches were goblin Goblins against Isengard. Now we're gonna get to see a Goblin Mirror, which might be the most interesting mirrors in the game Rise of the Witch King. We are on the map, Holin, Molin, Edit as well. Looks like meat's back on the menu, boys! <laughs> Looks like meat is back on the menu, boys. Jaffer, thank you so much for the follow and welcome. Alright, guys, we have the red goblin player, Dread Reaper, at the top side. Against the yellow goblin player, Ave ah, Ave, at the bottom side. The Red Reaper was picking the Isengard faction constantly in the last three matches. Now he decides to pick the goblin faction instead. Let's see. Two tunnels are coming up for Ave ah, Ave, two tunnels are coming up for Dread Reaper. I think early on we're gonna see quite a lot of goblin. Warriors fighting against each other all around the map. But later on we might see some units like, um, you know, Spiderling, Spider Riders. But what I would love to see in this matchup is God Kill the Goblin King. At least one of the players has to go for this guy, right? Because it's a Goblin Mirror, we have two Goblin factions now in one game. And I missed my Goblin King, guys. I missed him so much, I would love to see him in the game number four. Four tunnels start into the first Goblin Cave. On the other side, we have two tunnels, Goblin Cave into the third tunnel. So this is a more like a normal start from Ave Ave. He's gonna go for early Goblin Warriors into the second Goblin, Goblin Cave. And this is much more economical start. This can work. It's like a high risk, high reward kind of thing in my opinion. Because you will have four tunnels to begin with. You have more command points, more resource income. And if you can save all these four tunnels early on, you can actually have four of them hitting level 2 at pretty much the same time. But again, your units are gonna be much, much more delayed because look at this, Goblin Warriors from Ave Ave are already on the field. You might go for the creep. A hole in edit is pretty much like the map for of Eisen in my opinion because we have the same amount and the same type of creeps on this map. The four work layers, one, two in the middle, one here and one here at the bottom side, and two troll layers protecting, just like in the map for of Eisen, those ends. Same creeps, same types of creeps, same uh, structures, neutral structures you can capture. And yeah, indeed, Ave Ave is going for the creep in the middle of the map first with the Goblin Warriors. They're gonna hit level 2 after that. On the other side, a Dread Reaper is getting his goblins inside the tunnel. Yes, one more tunnel around this side. And we need to keep an eye on the builders. One of them is here, and one of them is building up a visual already after the second Goblin Cave. So we're gonna see half trolls swordsmen. I think this matchup we're gonna also see something like cave trolls, which is something we don't see very often. Remember cave trolls, but also the mountain trolls from the model faction, they got nerfed this patch. In the patch 2.02 version 8.4 it is. They now require much more time in order to level up to level 2. They cost the same money though, because you know still 500 resources. <clears throat> um but you know Delaying the experience or, you know, kind of lowering the experience points and delaying them the level 2 um, kind of makes them not very effective anymore because unlike mountain trolls from the Moto faction, the goblin trolls, they are not even able to heal up by eating an orc. That's not possible. So if you, you know, if you're gonna be able to poke them really hard, they won't have to sustain anymore. Matty, welcome. Hi guys, thank you so much for being here. Right, uh, Dread Reaper is creeping the work lane as well. You're gonna have the first attack. Uh, Warchant is available for both. Never mind, Dread Reaper went actually for the cave pads. Ah, we have a went for the Warchant. Let's see who's gonna get the creep here at the top side. I'm curious. It looks like Ave Ave has more units around this side, so if he can actually kill those goblins from Dread Reaper, he can steal the creep easily. Ossi Afna, my man, thank you so much for four months with the primers. Thank you guys so much for this support. Subbing to this channel means a lot to me. Thank you guys. Okay, uh, we have some small fights like mentioned before in the middle of the map between goblins, but so far not economic, no economical damage dealt. Nice one here from Ave Ave being able to steal the creep. Yes, by the way, three goblin caves into the fissure. 
on the other side we have two goblin caves into the fissure with that being said Abe Habe obviously gonna have more units on the field uh, fissure is being upgraded to level one no it's level one only he's gonna go for half troll swordsman and this fissure is level two and that's gonna give us the chance to see some uh, cave trolls cave trolls are gonna be nice against everything what Abe Habe has on the field right now and in order to counter that he needs to get some archers on the field and those goblins, goblin archers are actually doing surprisingly well against the cave trolls. Especially with the poison arrows, they can burst him down very quickly. On the other side, you know, the cave trolls are gonna be nice against the goblins. You can one-shot them. They are dealing splash damage with the tree in their hands. And they're gonna be also nice against half troll swordsman. <clears throat> and they're gonna force at least Ave Ave to make multiple archers. Because if you don't make archers... You will need a lot of goblin warriors in order to kill this guy. Especially if he, has, if, he, if he has a tree in his hands, because that's gonna give him the splash damage he needs. He will hit like an absolute truck, as you guys said in the chat. Okay, let's see how much damage he will be able to deal. He's not dealing enough damage around this. It would be kinda nice. Imagine him hitting this tunnel and dealing damage to those goblin caves as well. One of the most important tunnels from Ave Ave is gonna be taken down. And look at this damage, guys. I mean, he's not one-shotting the half troll swordsman, don't get me wrong, but he's being able to knock them down on the ground constantly. During all this time, uh, Ave Habe was able to get many goblin warriors in the backside, including uh, half troll swordsman. This tunnel has been taken down, the troll has to disengage. He's also creeping the second work layer in the middle of the map. We have still one more work layer left on the map, Holy Edit, at the bottom right side. Um, yeah, I mean, let's check, let's take a look into the current power points and command points. Ave Ave has collected 8 power points now, after the war chant, and he has 550 command points available. On the other side, we see 400 command points only for Dread Reaper. Yes, he was going for the war chant. Ave is gonna go for the Spider Ally summon, definitely. He has also half troll pikemen on the field. They are gonna be great against the mountain troll. I mean, cave troll, sorry. Uh, and the Spider Allies are gonna be nice as well. The good thing for uh, Dread Reaper though, is the fact that he has debuff and buff for his units. Jenks wants the troll to do splash damage to the full map, no no no. But you, did you guys see that? It was they were bursting down this troll in a second. And like mentioned before, this cave troll, unlike the model troll, has no sustain. You can't eat a orc, you can always you know, pick up a goblin and throw that goblin. But you can't heal up with this troll unless you hit level 2. He's gonna die at this point. And losing them hurts big time, guys. What's going for the Tainted Land? It was Ave Ave going for the Tainted Land. That's gonna delay his spider allies. Oh! He's coming from the backside, level 2. But look how fast he's dying to those buffed goblin archers. He still was able to kill quite a lot. But he lost already two trolls and that's a thousand resources guys it's a thousand resources he's losing just like that and yeah he needs he was also investing a lot of money for the upgrades to level two this also cost by the way 300. three goblin caves one fissure level one he's getting more half troll swordsmen half troll pikemen and goblin archers and warriors on the field while dread reaper is trying to get some more cave trolls however they were not very effective so far you can always use them as a ranged unit with the rocks, but again, you know, you can't approach those pikemen, that's not possible. They're gonna hit you one time and you're gonna lose your troll. And we have also seen how much damage those goblin archers are gonna be able to deal with these cave trolls. The older from Dread Reaper? Is he paying attention? Yeah, he's paying attention, but is this gonna be enough? No, it's not gonna be enough, but yeah, I mean, very very well done here from Ave Ave. Goblin warriors are so fast, you can't run away from them, that's not possible. And the builder has been taken down. And he might be even able to destroy this tunnel. That's gonna be close. We have also archers on the field from Dread Reaper. They are not moving. They need to pay attention. This is a level 2 tunnel. So keeping that alive would be very important. He has only 2 level 2 tunnels left on the field. Just like Ave Ave. Um, this one is level 2. And this one is level 2 as well. Uh, 700 command points for Ave Ave by the way guys. That's impressive. Without any battle expansions around the fortress. On the other side, 500 command points are available for uh, Dread Reaper. He's down also in terms of uh, power points. 
Warchan has been used from the yellow goblin player. Ah, we have it now. In the middle of the map. We have no trolls on the field anymore, right? I think we have one troll. I don't even know where he is. He was having a rock in his hands. Abe was also creeping the troll layer at the top right side. He's not paying attention. He's forced to disengage now. There is a backup with goblin archers on the field. Uh, the troll is here. He was able to creep the work layer from uh, Dread Reaper. But you can see yourself, creeping with the trolls doesn't give you nearly as much experience as with any other unit in the game. Like normally, like Spiderlings, you know, or any infantry unit in the game would hit level 2 in those kind of situations and he was only getting a quarter experience points. So in order to level him up to level 2, you need to literally kill 4 work layers, you know. Okay, he was paying attention now, he will be capturing this in as well. Uh, Dread Reaper can now deal some economical damage, this tunnel is gonna be taken down. He is still not paying attention, he might be easily able to destroy this tunnel by the way. He's finally watching. He might. He will. This one is gonna go down definitely. If he's gonna be able to see that, yes, he's gonna be able to see that. This tunnel is gonna be saved. Uh, archers are doing a great job, but we have a lot of archers also from Ave Ave. I mean, this game is actually turning around now in favor of Threat Reaper. Uh, Fissure is also level two. We are also getting to see some more cave trolls now from Ave Ave. He's getting into the backline. Nice hit. Beautiful. Um, yeah, knocking them down is the way to go, pretty, pretty much, and you can do that easily with the tree in your hands if Dread Reaper is not paying attention. If he does pay attention, however, you can always use the aggressive stance and the poison blades. Like from two, three battalions of these units, you can actually make sure to burst down this cave troll fast. Ave has also now multiple cave trolls on the field. We know they are, they are pretty much good against anything, against units against goblins, against structures. We have a lot of goblins also around this side. How many goblin caves he has? He has three goblin caves and one spider pit level 1, fissure level 2. No spider pit upon the field, three goblin caves into the fissure was the build order from Ave Ave. Who has now 625 command points collected, his command points kept. He can't make more units right now. On the other side we have 600 command points collected from Dread Reaper. He was just using the Warchan in the middle of the map. He has also cave pads available for the fight. If Ave Ave is gonna, you know, decide to take this fight. This Tainted Land is also from Dread Reaper. You can see that because the units from uh, Ave, Ave, Ave Ave are not gloving. And they are on top of that Tainted Land. There is a tower expansion around the fortress as well. And it's gonna be hard for Dread Reaper to deal damage to this kind of structures. Ave Ave is also going for the upgrade to level 3 actually. That's gonna make the production speed much faster and the goblin caves are gonna become also harder to take down. They will have more health. Okay, Ave Ave is also using his buff. Trolls are coming. These are from Ave Ave, by the way, guys. Cave base is being used. He needs to make sure to burst down those trolls fast enough. Otherwise, they're gonna take down everything from Dread Reaper here. Easily. This one is gonna potentially even hit level 2. Oh, that's gonna be Fiesta. Nice hit. Does he have Scavenger? Yes, he does have Scavenger. That's actually very nice against Goblins because you will kill Goblins like any every single second. Scavenger is gonna be nice to have. Red Reaper has almost 9 power points collected. He can also go for the Scavenger if he wants to. I think that's the way to go. That's gonna give you so much more money. Look at the units. There's so many archers on the field that's gonna make it almost impossible for Dread Reaper to engage with the trolls. And talking about the trolls, I don't see any more trolls on the field from Dread Reaper. He has only one at the bottom right side, fighting against Azok. This tunnel is gonna be taken down if Dread Reaper is paying attention. Okay. Yeah, he has Goblin Spider Riders from the Spider Pits level 2. That's a structure uh, Ave Ave doesn't own. And smart move actually here, I like this, because he has now two towers here pretty much. Those uh, goblin caves are gonna work, I mean, these three goblin caves are gonna work like a tower. And they have also 4500 HP now, which is gonna make them much tankier. Builder from Dread Reaper is not paying attention and that's gonna be the second builder he's losing this game. It hurts because they cost 500 each, guys. It's a thousand resources losing just like that. What is this troll doing? He's dying. Plus 88 from killing the troll because of the scavenger. And Dread Reaper was going for the Wildman of Dunland. Uh, that means in long terms, Scavenger is gonna pay off big time. And there was a really questionable Wildman of Dunland summon because look what's gonna happen to them. 
They're dying in a second. They, they wiped... They're already dead, guys. They're just like that, you know? A waste of 10 power points without being able to deal any kind of damage to this unit because the trolls were just in position taking down those wild men the second they get summoned. And yeah, that's why Scavenger would be overall a much better choice. Smart move from Ave Ave going for that, by the way. It was already so much rewarding. He killed so much. He was killing trolls for 88 resources. He was killing goblins. One resources for every single one of them. So he's getting constantly money. 750 command points collected as well with two battle expansions. So technically he has 600 command points. You know, when we count these two away. Uh, on the other side we have 600 command points collected for Dread Reaper. He has no battle expansions whatsoever. So it's the same amount of command points just like his opponent does have. But Ave Ave has a level 2 troll. Uh, he is, he is not healing up all the time for some reason. Maybe he needs to be level 3, I'm not sure. But you can see in those kind of situations how rewarding the scavenger ability is. Like it's so nice to have. You get money all the time because you are playing against a goblin player who is using 3 goblin caves, you know, and spamming goblins all the time. Nice one, the tunnel in the front side is gonna be taken down. This game is still even. Uh, spider riders are gonna be a nice counter unit also to the trolls because you can always use the bow mods and then use the poison arrows in order to take them down he has three of these trolls they are healing up with level two okay i take it back slowly but surely okay if he can take down this level three tunnel in the front side it would be huge it's gonna make ave have lose 100 command points there are some units fire bombs corsars coming from the inn at the top right side from Ave Ave. He's not gonna commit on this tunnel. We have three trolls around. This one is healing up over time. Fissure is level 2. Maybe Fire Drakes can be nice in this matchup as well. Imagine Fire Drakes against a Goblin spam. Because I feel like Fire Drakes are gonna be tanky enough to not die fast to those Goblin archers. And they're gonna be overall a great choice because they have the splash damage. They deal so much damage in the area. And you can actually one-shot like full army with one strike. Okay. Um, tunnel in the back side is level 3 from Dread Reaper. The one in the front side is also level 3. That's really important to keep them alive. Fire bombs. They're gonna die eventually. Oh, okay. White Man of Talent into the War Chant. That's smart from Ave Ave. The level 3 tunnel is gonna be Burry State down. The reason why he was able to do that because he was having cave pads around for the vision. And obviously you need vision control in order to summon anything. You can't summon in a dark area, that's not possible. Smart move. And even if they die now, I think it's absolutely worth it. Taking down a level 3 tunnel just like that is so nice. Very well done here from Ave Ave. That's gonna drop down Red Reaper to 500 command points and his command points capped wise. But on the other side he was just able to kill a builder from Ave Ave. This tunnel in the front side is going to be taken down. Look how much, how many units he has around this side defensively. The white men are still remaining on the field. The troll is around this side. He's level 3, by the way. He can, you know, the spider riders, they can chase him down if they want to. These two trolls are very low and they are only level 1, so they won't have the self-regeneration. Ave is getting more and more trolls on the field. Look how many trolls he has. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 trolls in total, guys. Every single one of them. And I think Dread Reaper doesn't have a single troll left on the field anymore. He's not even going for more trolls at this point. Yeah, they cost 60 command points. And considering the fact that Ave Ave has, you know, 5 of them, he's actually investing, like, a lot of his command points into the trolls. And I see also God killed the Goblin King on the field. There he is, boys. Level 2. I like to see that. I think this guy is super underrated because he's the only possible way of getting leadership for the Goblin Faction. You can't have leadership other than that. Once you get him level 4, leadership is gonna be nice. He can give you double buff with the Skull Totem, which also gives you fear resistance, by the way, guys. So, in some certain matchups against, for example, Mordor or against Elves with the Cloud Prey, Golden Arrow, against Man of the West with the Horn of Gondor from Boromir, the Skull Totem can be very nice. Oh, look at the trolls. They are so strong, guys. So strong. He's looking for a chance to trample. Maybe Spider Riders were not the best investment. Because they are even more expensive than the, than the Cave Trolls. And he has so many of them. GG is being called. What a great performance 
from Ave Havi, the goblin player, in the best of five, winning the first ga two games, losing the third, and winning the fourth game with a clean 3 1 against Red Reaper. Ave Havi is moving to the finals of the winner bracket. He's gonna face against Fairy. And if he can win against Fairy, he's gonna have at least secured himself $50 cash prize. GG, well played, very well done.